more could you ask for? Let's have a bit of a play with them. Hello, good morning, welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. Now I've come out to an area, you see a lovely sun, a lovely morning rainbow. I've come out to an area to try and find some bait. And one of the first signs that I've found to show me there might be some here is the dolphins. The family group of probably 30 dolphins. All the way up as far as you can see up there, look. So that's a good sign. I'll have a quick steam around, see if I can't find some bait, and then we'll get where we're going. That's what we're looking for. Nice mackerel. Yeah, all I did was I just followed the dolphins and the birds. They found them for me. There is an awful lot of feed around in the water, like small, small fish. So that's what I'm seeing on the sounder. And the mackerel, just in amongst them. Just gotta pick them out. That's what the feed is. There, look. That is a little pilchard. A perfect live bait. The plan is that once we've got quite a few, I'd say half a dozen, half a dozen mackerel or pilchards, we're going to head out and try some wrecks. Now unfortunately this time of year, oh, unfortunately this time of year, the wrecks get heavily fished by commercial netters. So I'm expecting that we're going to have quite a bit of steaming around to do today to try and find a wreck. Oh, there we go, two nice mackerel. We'll have some steaming around to do to find a wreck that hasn't got fishing gear on it. That's a good one. Right, I finally found a wreck that hasn't got any fishing gear on. Come to the first two that I wanted to try and there was nets on them. So hopefully third time's the charm. And all I'm doing now is I'm going to run a drift. I've just killed the engine just ahead of the wreck and I'm going to run a drift and I'm going to see which way we're going. Also at the same time I'm hoping to run down some baited feathers and maybe even a live bait just to see if there's anything on the wreck because you don't know this could have been netted for two weeks. Generally as well it's a good idea to check to see what the health of the wreck is like. If you're catching small things like pouting and whiting there is a good chance that there will be big fish there. If there aren't any small fish, there won't be any big fish. So it's a good thing to always trek. So all I've got is I've just got some mackerel feathers with a little bit of mackerel on it. I'm hoping for pouting, whiting. Oh, there's a bite already. You will sometimes catch ling like this. But often what will happen is because you're only using a light trace, a mackerel trace, you'll get a real good bite and it'll bite you off. Found a bit of the wreck, go around, try and start up and go around. also a fish there now. 
Occupational hazard of fishing in a wreck. You see by how steaming up ahead of the wreck, I managed to pull the snag back out the direction that it went in. And all I did was just reset my drift. Doesn't always work. Sometimes you can get properly snagged, like if your leg gets snagged, you're <laughs> yeah, you're likely gonna lose your rig. But if it's just one of the hooks. There we are. Just like I said, a little pouting. So if these guys are here, they'll likely be Ling and Cod here. Uh, sorry, Ling and Conga here. And that was all it was, just a little mackerel trace with some mackerel on. Right, I've spun myself around and I want to put the anchor down. What I'll be using is I'll be using a 5 kilo plow anchor and this is rigged to trip out backwards on a weak link just in case it ever gets stuck. I've then got 20 feet of chain and on my anchor rope I have a buoy and an old ring attached. That's used when hauling the anchor afterwards. I am in 185 feet of water, so I'm expecting to put out around about 300 to 350 feet of rope. And what I have is, you should always run your anchor rope out on your deck before you let the anchor out. Because no matter how you try and organize it or how you tie it up, when the anchor goes over the side, it will get in a tangle. <laughs> it happens every time. So five minutes beforehand, straighten it all out, making sure there's no knots, no tangles, will save you a lot of hassle. There is an in-depth video showing you how to anchor a wreck on the channel already. I'll tag it in here. Anyway, let's go around and get this anchor in. Right, that's where I put the anchor down there. Those were the first drifts that I did to show me which direction I was going to go. By putting out 350 feet of rope, I am sat right on the start of the wreck. Right, well that's us sat at anchor. Now, there is a little bit of movement in the water, there is a bit of swell. And we have got some squalls in and around today. So we are sat on the wreck all right now, but I'm probably gonna have to re-anchor in a bit. <laughs> so we'll just see what we can get done. Just dropped my live bait back. It's just been hit. I think it's been hit by a link. Literally just dropped it down. Just got doosh. I think it's. Oh no, it's spatty. Yeah, I'll leave my live bit out the back there. I might have to put the camera away in a second because there's a squall coming. I don't want to get the camera wet. No, oh, there's a fish. Ah, oh, I pinged it. Up it comes back round. You see that? See the rod tip just bounced twice and then went over. I think that's probably had my live bit away now. <sighs> Try that again. That was textbook. Yeah. Ping my live bit off. Try that once more. The rain's come on, I am going to have to put the camera away, I'm sorry. Right, the rigs I'm going to be fishing, I'm going to be fishing a live bait rig at the back there if I can. I've got one live bait left. And I'm going to be fishing either a running ledger, as in a conga rig, or my wrecking rig. At the moment I've got a wrecking rig on here. Because I'm pretty sure what hit that live bait was a was a, a link. Sorry, I was just looking at that a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure what hit that live bait was a link. So my wrecking rig usually pulls the link out. There is a video on the Fish Locker Workshop channel showing you how to make the wrecking rig. And all I've done is I've baited it with um, a mackerel flapper and a mackerel fillet. Now, ling generally they give quite an aggressive bite. 
Conga can be anything from like a small mouthing bite to like a proper hit. So yeah. There's a bite. Maybe a little one. That was definitely a bite. Any like steady rhythmic movement is generally the movement of the boat. What you're looking for is something erratic, something out of rhythm. This wrecking rig catches eels and congas. Generally though, the congas come on the bottom hook and the ling come on the top hook. I'll show you it when I bring it up, hopefully with the fish attached. That's a fish. I think a conga's picked up the live bear. That is an absolute ginormous link. That'll be a 30 pound link. Freaking hell. Oh my word. Right. Bite my fingers, bite my fingers. Right. Flip the neck. A hundred gram popping rod. A five thousand size spinning reel. There's my live bait rigging its mouth. That was caught on a <laughs> That was caught on a size 8 or chino. Look at that, look. Just. Oh God, I'm gonna have to turn it around. Look at the size of that ling. Look at the width of it. That has got to be. That's got to be a 30 pound fish. Look at the size of its head. Look at them teeth in there, my word. I'm sure it had to be a conga. Flipping egg. What? <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to get a photo of this. But that is a monster. On a live bait rig, on a spinning rod. <laughs> yeah, wasn't expecting that. Did say I thought it was a ling the first time round. I think we have another one. Oh, that was going mad then at all. Leave that there. Ah, another rainstorm's coming. We're gonna have to go. Right. I'll quickly talk you through what this live bait rig was. All it is is a large locked in lead. It's a four ounce locked in lead because I'm deep here, I'm 180 feet. And then I'd run myself. What's that? Two feet of 80 pound, 80 pound mono. Oh, you can see where it's rubbed up here. And I have put a little bit of Lumi tube on there. 
keep an eye on that rod for me. Put a little bit of lumi tube on there just in case I got one of them. Because you can see how rubbed up the line is here. Its teeth would have I would have just gone through that like nothing. Now it did get me on my hand. I did put a glove on. Unfortunately, because I'd seen that it was only because it was such a big link, I got hold of it and it bit hold of my hand. Now even through a set of gloves, that's taking my fingers up, so it shows you. They aren't to be messed with. This actually, this is a dead pilchard, but it shows you how I was fishing it. Yeah, it just goes to show what an absolutely monster link that is. I'll get this set back and I'll fish for the bottom baits because there's going to be more fish. <laughs> what an amazing fish! And on the lightest setup that I was using, a 100 gram spinning rod. For anyone interested to know, this is a Daiwa Ballistic and this is an Amura IC. I haven't done a review of this rod yet because I feel like I haven't properly tested it but it has been absolutely phenomenal 114 pound blue shark what's probably going to be a 30 pound link and it's light enough that I can fish for wrasse with it I can fish for bass with it this reel, this is probably one of the best spinning reels I've ever owned my wife bought it for Christmas well, Christmas back Gah. 29 Ah oh, yeah, 29 oh, Just one more look at it, look at that <laughs> Whew. 29 pound, brilliant Dropped it. Oh, no way. That was quite a savage take. I think it just had all of the fish, then all of the bait, it didn't have all of the, the book. Yeah, that felt like a good eel, that. What you can often do is if you drop straight back down again, even if you don't get the same fish, there might have been two or three down there competing. Get these scales put away, get tidied up and I'll get another fresh break down. Motion's not making it too easy but... You just have to overcome, don't you? What I've done today... Is I've picked a wreck. I've picked a couple of wrecks on this side of the bay. Because we've got the tide going in that direction and the wind going in that direction. Well, almost exactly wind and tide together. So that both of them are running me in the same direction. If you've got the wind going in that direction and the tide going in that direction, you swing about a lot. So I planned my fishing according to the weather forecast. Unfortunately, you can't do anything about this swell. I think I'll bring up and put some fresh baits on. This is my wrecking rig. You can see it's just big two hook flapper rig and all I'm doing is I'm putting a macro flapper on the bottom and a macro fillet on the top uh, what I think had happened with that last fish is it just got rolled to the macro flapper on the bottom and I haven't found the hook you can't do nothing about that can you I have got three more hours of the tide so I'll be able to fish this for another three hours unless the conditions become too rough the only problem with a swell like this is it can pop your anchor off it doesn't make fishing on a wreck easy because you're constantly swinging around but if your anchor bumps you can end up dragging it into the wreck which means you probably lose your anchor you don't want that to happen
first few feet in a fight when you're wrecking are brutal. Oh no, I've got one on the spinning rod as well. Got a fish on the spinning rod as well. There's a link. That ling on the wrecking rig is about 9 or 10 pounds. A jumbo pouting. Look what he's done to that pilcher. Oh, some of bigger's had hold of this guy, you know, look. See where someone's had hold of it. That would have been a ling or a conger that's had hold of that. If you can get the eye of the hook out, you can generally get the hook out. I'm going to need a T-bar on this. Let's see if I can release this. It's your lucky day, son. And that was what was on the other rod. Another nice link. Like I say, probably about ten pound. Get him dispatched, and then we'll get the baits back down. I've just been reeling in a pouting, hooked a pouting. I knew it was a pouting. Then halfway up, rod arch straight over. I thought, I know what that is. Right. See if you can tell me what's done that. That's a poor beagle shark. Bringing the weight in, bringing the pouting up from the bottom. Reeling it in from the bottom. Got maybe 20 yards off the bottom. Whack. Poor beagle shark. So yeah, we might end up bumping into him again today. Exciting! Get over there, you! Ah, oh, it's a fish that's found a wreck. Got the bite and I turned round to turn the camera on, it's found a wreck. And it's off. Often you can find that they'll do that, that's conger eels that. If they find one of the hooks and get hold of a piece of wreck, they'll manage to turn the hook out of their mouth. I'll tell you what, they are smart. Leaving that rod up there at the back like that. I touched the bottom, I knew the lead was at the bottom when the rod tip was near the was near the was near the surface. So I know by lifting the rod up like that, that my bait is suspended at least a rod length off the bottom. So if anything picks it up, it's likely to be a ling that's come up off the bottom. Which gives me at least a couple of seconds of notice and a bit of a head start to try and get it out of there. You will. That's a bite. Do you see that like double nod? You will get big pouting, you will get like four pound pouting. They will give a good bite. I do apologise to anyone who's feeling seasick watching this. It's, it is a little bit lumpy today. We are swinging around a little bit, covering maybe 50 feet. 
this wreck is only 50 feet long so if you don't get it bang on you often don't find the fish just had something smash the light bait well, <laughs> the dead bait on the light bait maybe. just sat up and all of a sudden just, just, just. now it might be it's just come up and bit the bait off could be a pouting that's come up and attacked it all I've done is I've just chopped the rod a little bit feels like it's still there feels like the bait's still there anyway if there is a poor beagle down there we might end up getting bitten off on that if we do I'll stick a wire trace on I don't want to sacrifice a rod now to sit with a wire trace on and catch nothing or it could catch like a nice a nice pollock, a nice cord, another nice ling something. If you're watching the rod tips, what are you looking for? The steady, steady movement is the waves. When it gives something like a, something erratic, that's what you're looking for. Swell's picking up a bit too much, the wind's coming on. I'm going to give it half an hour more and if the conditions don't get better, Conditions continue to get worse, we're gonna have to call it. <laughs> yeah, just getting a bit lumpy now. Keep getting loads of little trembling bites. And I thought, I bet it's pouting. So, all I've done was I stuck my painted feathers back on again and dropped straight down the bottom. And literally, within seconds of it being on the bottom, two more pouting. So yeah, that's just what's savaging me bits. Can't get to Can't get to the big fish for the little fish. Some people Some people do eat these. Maybe when they get to about four pounds they might have some on them. All that I use them for is conga bait or pot bait. Weather's really picked up now. It is absolutely howling. I don't know if you can tell by behind me or how much it's swaying around. But yeah, it's, it's too rough. Now I'm gonna try and pull the anchor up. I'm gonna leave the GoPro going for as long as I can, but it's gonna get wet. We are gonna end up taking waves over the top of the boat, just cause I'm gonna have to steam into the weather. If that starts happening, I'll have to turn the camera off. If not, I'll show you pulling me anchoring. by hand, just hand over fist in weather like this, I'd have never managed it. Try one of those Alderney rings and boys, it's an absolute godsend. Right, you've got some type of idea how rough it is now, don't you? And we've got rain coming, so I'm going to put the camera away. But two brilliant fish, an amazing ling on a live bait rig. I hope you've enjoyed joining me, I hope it's been interesting. All the very best, take it easy. Have a good one. It's not all fun and games. <laughs>